I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life removing pain. Lord. friends and welcome to another 3ABN Today cooking program. I'm Jill Morricone and with me in the kitchen are some special guests and special friends of the ministry here. I'm speaking of Heidi Tompkins and Ivan Raj and welcome to both of you. We're so glad that you're here. Thank you. We're glad to be here. Now we first met Ivan and Heidi at our winter camp meeting in Sanford, Florida. And we were just so blessed by their passion for God and their, mm -hmm. their heart for ministry. And we just wanted you to come and to share with our friends at home just, just the talents that God has given you and the health ministry mm -hmm. that God has given you. So tell me a little bit about Heidi's Health Kitchen and your ministry and what you're involved in. Sure. <coughs> so Heidi's Health Kitchen uh, is in New York City. We are a health food ministry and we teach, we offer free cooking classes in New York City, which I don't think anyone offers for free in New York City. <laughs> Especially <laughs> vegan and gluten free. Okay. Yes. Because your ministry focuses entirely on vegan and gluten free. Gluten -free. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. plant-based, plant vegan, and gluten free. Yeah. And so we are uh, doing all we can to educate people while we are looking for a place to open an Adventist restaurant or a hygienic restaurant in New York City. Amen. Yes, yes. we want to add uh, medical missionaries and Bible workers as well as a part of our team in the mm -hmm. Heidi's Health Kitchen restaurant. So people ask us, where is your kitchen? We said, no, we don't have, we have the name right now. <laughs> but the kitchen will follow. We kept the name as kitchen. I mean, we use the word kitchen in the name out of faith. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's wonderful. Yes. Now you're already involved in, in creating recipes. You're involved. Yes. You have a Facebook. You have, um, I know they have fantastic, they have a website, but they have fantastic food because I've tried some of it and it's very good. <laughs> I know that they have Karubis, Carob Karubis. They have other products that you yes. you, that you make and sell and you also yes. do cooking classes. But yes. the Lord's leading you mm -hmm. to yes. open up a restaurant. Yes. yes. And we're very excited about that. We've been praying it for We've been praying for that for months. Yeah. We've started actually looking at real estate, commercial real estate in New York City, looking for that right place. We know at the right time, God will open it up. Yes. Amen, amen. Well, we were joined with you in prayer for that. Amen. That's a big need. It you is. Know, and people can come in and, and you can become acquainted with people in the community and then reach out with the gospel. Correct, yes. correct. Beautiful. That's the goal, right. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> amen. Well, today <laughs> we're doing Indian food. Yes. <laughs> We love now, Indian food. Now, we didn't mention before, <laughs> Ivan, you are originally from India. Yes, I'm from a city called Chennai, South India. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you are the inspiration behind the Indian dishes? Absolutely. But yes. she, the thing was, although I was inspiration, she learned to make it by herself. Okay. She, everything was like she learned it by herself, and then she makes excellent Indian food. Yeah, so so you didn't grow up in India or anything like that, but yet no. God put on your heart. And yes, then I've always enjoyed spicy food, and uh, <laughs> as I've learned more about the spices from India, they just fit right in. Yeah. So God has given me wisdom on what to use and yes. what to put together, and so I've just learned um, by doing. Oh, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited about that. <laughs> Let's look at the recipes that we're going to be making here today. We're starting with the sambar, sambar powder. Yes. And what's sambar powder? Sambar powder is um, a, a seasoning. seasoning that yep. is used in sambar. Okay. And as I've 
used it, I really love how it flavors things, so I added several recipes, which we'll be doing today. Okay, yes. so the sandbar powder, we're using a lot of different things. Then we're yes. making, we're putting it in sandbar, which is a type of stew, is that correct? Yes, correct. And I see you have it served here next to rice cakes? Idli. Idli, yes. Okay, <laughs> very nice. And then a creamy cashew sauce with broccoli and brown rice. Mm. Yes. Now that's a nice layered dish. Yes. yes. That just came to me one day. I was just cooking and experimenting with all these yeah. Indian spices and that came to me and it, it was a good one. Very a good, very good. Yeah, and then we're making another soup and you call that rasam. 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 Yeah, rasam. Okay. It's uh, like a soup, we call it in India as pepper water. People actually drink it after they have their rice. It's good for digestion. Nice, and, okay. Uh, you can also mix rice with rasam and have it as well. Sounds <laughs> very medicinal and too, from what I understand. People very... drink it when they're sick. Nice. Yes. Okay, and we're ending with a vegan mango lassi. We gotta have mm. that. We yes. Have our dessert. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, and you told me that had a special, some of the special spices from India yes. in it that made it yes. different than a regular smoothie. Absolutely. So I'm excited to learn yes. about that. <laughs> we're gonna do our first recipe. We're gonna do the sambar powder. For that, you need one large handful of curry leaves, two tablespoons coriander seeds powder, 60 red chilies, two tablespoons tor dal, yes. is that correct? Okay. Right. Two tablespoons gram dal, yes. two tablespoons urid dal, one tablespoon fenugreek seeds, two teaspoons turmeric, and one and a half teaspoons hing. hing. Hing, yes. I should have had you read these uh, ingredients here. <laughs> 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 so show us what we're doing. Sure, so this might be a little intimidating when you think 60 red chilies, <laughs> but don't worry. I was a little stressed about that. <laughs> like, okay, this is gonna be off the chart spicy. <laughs> Even her mom was uh, stressed, you're like, 60 chilies? <laughs> yeah. How could that be, right? So we're gonna start, we're gonna dry roast most of this, and then okay. we're gonna blend it together, and it makes our sambar powder. Okay. So we're gonna start with the coriander seeds powder. You can also use coriander seeds. We're using the powder today. Okay. And we're adding the 60 red chilies. Wow. And so we are going to... Yeah, that's to right. The one back one? here. No, the one up there. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay. So we're just going to dry roast these. And we just turn them around a little bit. Just heat them a little bit just to bring out a little bit of the flavor. Mm -hmm. And the chilies, uh, just to let you know, um, yeah. the top has to be taken off. Oh. And then you put it in. So. Okay. Yep. Okay. And these don't need to be broken because we're going to blend them. So just real quick, we're, we're heating this up, and this is gonna go into that bowl, Jill. Oh, this bowl here. Yes. Wow, okay. Great, that's excellent. So we're gonna... And what's the purpose of dry roasting it? Well, how does uh, that dry change roasting the it, the, flavor? The heat just changes the flavor and brings the flavor mm -hmm. out a little bit more. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're pretty tough to take raw. You know, I mean, they've already, <laughs> they've already been dried. Okay. They're mm -hmm. sun-dried. Mm -hmm. They've already been dried but the heat does tone them down a little okay. bit, actually. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> so should. Okay, great. So yes, we're putting that right into this bowl. Okay. Normally, would you dry roast them a little longer? Or Maybe, is yes. This? Okay, okay. Yep. So like three to five minutes, or what would be yeah. ideal? Uh -huh. Yes, they will start to turn just a little bit brown. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to burn them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you kind of want to keep an eye on them and stir them or do something? Yes. Yep, so we just want to keep stirring them with a wooden spoon. The next thing that goes in is uh, some of our dolls, right? So we're roasting uh, the gram doll, the tour doll, and the urad doll now, together. Now, what's the difference between those three? These are all different lentils. Some of them are larger than the others. You can see I some of them are that. cut in half. See, these are split. Mm -hmm. So this is a split yellow lentil. Okay. I see that. And they have a lot of protein in them as well. And then again, it also helps tone down the spiciness a little bit. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Okay. So we're going to just toast these lightly until they're light brown, and then we're adding our curry leaves. And I absolutely love curry leaves. I like the flavor. I love the mm -hmm. smell. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. as soon as I started using curry leaves, they started going into everything. <laughs> Curry leaves are good for hair as well, hair growth. Really? Yes, yes, very good yes. For they okay. prevent grain of hair okay. and, and they promote hair growth. Wow. So we've we been should, learning we all these all great things. We should all be eating curry leaves. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. 
Okay, and so then we're gonna transfer this mixture into this bowl. The thing is, we don't wanna roast anything too long. We don't want anything to burn, mm -hmm. so we're doing things separately. Would they pop or not? They will not pop they like mustard pop. seeds. Okay. No, no, we are gonna do uh, mustard seeds in another dish. Okay. Now we're gonna dry roast the fenugreek seeds. Now, what's the principle of doing them separately instead of just ro dry roasting them all together? Some of these pieces were a little bit larger than these, and so they'll take a little bit longer. Makes but sense. But, you know, they, they, the times vary mm -hmm. to dry roast them. We don't want to burn anything. Okay. We don't want to dry roast them for too long. Okay. And so... Fenugreek seeds are actually good for uh, uh, diabetics, like controlling diabetic. Mm -hmm. um, like if they have... In the morning, an empty stomach, have a handful, not handful, like half handful of uh, fenugreek seeds with water that helps control the... The blood uh, sugar. Blood sugar. Oh. It's very good. My mom has tried and it, it worked for her. Wow. Yeah, you need to... Okay, yeah. to help kind of, uh, regulate her <coughs> blood sugar. Yes. yes that blood. she took fenugreek seeds yes. in the morning. Yes, yes. Correct. Oh, that's great. Yes. We yeah. advise you to do this under counsel with your doctor. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> so don't just go off everything. Okay, so these are getting toasted, okay. so we are... Oh, yeah, I can see all that. set. See how they've changed color they a have, little bit? Yep. Yeah, so these are going to go right into here. Sorry, we're gonna stir all this together a little bit and it's gonna go right into that Vitamix. Okay. It smells, uh... Do you smell it? <laughs> so yeah. It smells great, I can smell it. There you go. Okay, so we're gonna pour all of this right in. Can you get it? I think so. I'll be on the sides. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, those chili, chilies there are go. long. Uh -huh. <laughs> nice. And so then you could alter the spiciness of your dish. Yes, you sure could. Absolutely. How much of the sandbar powder? Yes, it, it is a good way to control spice. Right. Absolutely. You can say, I want all 60. I'm going to add the whole or I'm going <laughs> to not. And I'm just going to add a little yes. bit. Yes. Uh -huh. And so then we're going to go ahead and add, add to here our turmeric. Okay. As well as the hing. Hing. Now what's hing? Hing has an Indian name that Ivan will pronounce for us. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Asafoetida? Yeah, is that correct? Uh, in my language, in Tamil, it's it's called as perungayam. <laughs> if you want to pronounce Sperungayam. Yeah, perungayam. So hing is better for all of us. Hing is the American uh, hing identification. Is, okay. Yeah, when you use turmeric and hing, you have to be very careful uh, because uh, uh, you know if you put your hand in it and it'll smell for a long time. And yeah. turmeric yes. it, it stains. It colors. Sure, it absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so we're just gonna blend this up to a powder, and right. that's it. It's easy as that. We're just gonna push those red chilies down a little bit. Yeah. Okay. It's done. There you go. And that's that's it. And we have one that's fi finished up here, but it really is the same as this one, right? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Oh, you can smell it. It's a good strong <laughs> smell. I got a good whip. <laughs> I got a good whip. And so okay. this is our sambar powder. Yeah. And of course we have one there. Yeah, very nice. So we're gonna put this then into the sambar. Yes, we yes. are. Okay. As well as some of the other dishes. Good. All right. Let's read that recipe. You want to read that for us, Heidi? For the sure. Sambar. To make sambar, you'll need half a cup tour dal, one eggplant chopped, one green bell pepper chopped three potatoes chopped, three tomatoes chopped, three large onions chopped, one small piece of ginger crushed, one green chili chopped, three teaspoons of sambar powder, which we just made, one teaspoon cayenne pepper, half a teaspoon turmeric, one pinch of fenugreek seeds powdered, one pinch hing, two tablespoons of salt, one handful of cilantro, one teaspoon coconut oil, and one teaspoon cumin seeds. We also need one teaspoon mustard seeds, two red chilies, and one handful of curry leaves. So now we're putting the sambar powder into this sambar. Yes. Now this is, Ivan, you were just saying, this is traditional? Yes, it is a traditional, uh, how do we say, like gravy, or uh, you can add it to the rice. Sambar can be added to the rice, and you can also have it with um, a dish called idlis and upma and pongal. So, so many things. Uh, I mean, sambar is added to many other things as well as a side. So people dip 
in the sambar, or mix it up in the sambar. One of your favorite dishes? That's my favorite. Your favorite. The most favorite dish. <laughs> Ivan told me he could eat this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's how much he wow. likes it. Oh, that's So amazing. I figured I have to learn how to make this. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, you guys are ministry partners. So yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh -huh. So, would this be considered traditional, or would this be more like a party type of food, or that's is this traditional. like every day you eat this? Every, every day. day. Okay. Every day we can eat it. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Well, you've got a lot of ingredients going here. Yep. Yes, this process is a little bit lengthy with all the cutting and chopping, but mm -hmm. it is worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Okay, we will find out. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing that we are going to do is we're using tordal, and mm -hmm. this is a split lentil, mm -hmm. and you can see that it's yellow. Uh, mm -hmm. This has been washed and it's been soaked. Mm -hmm. So you absolutely want to wash and soak your tordal. As you're washing it, you'll see it's very starchy. Mm -hmm. The water mm -hmm. will turn yellow, mm -hmm. so we want to wash it okay. and rinse it and soak it for 30 minutes. And then we're putting it at the bottom of our pressure cooker. Do it. And this is the machine that we use to cook everything all together. I got a spoon. You need a spoon? Oh, sure. That would help. There you go. So we just want to get all of that in there. That's the base. And then we're going to add some good old American vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up with a dad who likes meat and <clears throat> potatoes. Meat and potatoes. Mm -hmm. We're getting him switched over to veggie meat and potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> so on top of our tordal, we are going to, that's been soaked, uh, we are going to put our potato that's okay. been chopped, the three potatoes chopped. And these are not yellow potatoes. Are no, they russets or? these are. Yep. Okay. Yes. And then on top of that, chopped tomatoes. Good. On top of that, lots Ooh, and lots of onions. There onion. is a lot of onions going on. <laughs> yes. I see that. But you know, they, they, you know, in cooking, they melt down to oh, almost yeah. nothing, Absolutely. you know, so it's perfectly fine. So and do we have the fire on yet or not yet? Not yet. We're going to turn okay. it on now, and we're going to uh, put some spices in and then water to cover it. Okay, so on top of this, we are going to uh, put the water to cover. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's no me not a measurable amount, it's just enough to cover? Just to cover, okay. yes. Do you need more? you want me to get you uh, some more? That would be great. We yes. do need a little bit more. Ivan, can you turn on the flame? Mm -hmm. Is it this one? Yes. It is, okay, excellent. And then we're going to start putting our other items. Here you go. Great. So we're going to pour more water in there to cover those vegetables. You need more? We do. <laughs> <laughs> so no to self. We can get a big Lots pitcher. of water, yes. <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and put in our green chilies, our sambar powder, which we just made, crushed ginger. I'll use that spoon, Ivan, please. Okay. Great. And then we're also putting in our turmeric. Okay. Cayenne pepper, which we love. <laughs> so it's got a couple kicks. We yeah. got the red chili <laughs> and the <laughs> really sambar does. powder going on. But we everything got the just blends together naturally and it's just delicious. And then we're putting our salt. Now you might think two tablespoons of salt is a lot, but remember, no, all of these vegetables were fresh. Yes. And so it really isn't a lot. And it just blends right in. So we're going to cover all of that with the water. And then can I have that cover, Ivan? Yep. Oh, yeah. Now your water's starting to come up. Yes. Excellent. And we're just going to mix this just so that the spices are distributed, distributed evenly. Because <coughs> we want that to cook, yes. cook in there. And I love the pressure cooker because things cook much quicker. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can I have the cover? Sure, sure, sure. I just want to take the scrape the sides as well. <laughs> sure. Yeah, very nice. It smells good. Mm -hmm. Yes, very aromatic, right? Smells like India to me. <laughs> <laughs> Going back home. <laughs> so then this pressure cooker um, 
be a challenge at times, but we want to get that pressed on and then we close it and seal it. Okay. And this is going to cook for a little while and while that is cooking, we're going to actually cook our eggplant and our green peppers. And what's the purpose of cooking them separately instead of cooking them in the pot with your pressure cooker? Um, they would get very very mushy if they were in the pressure cooker. So we just cook them a little bit in the fry pan and then they go in afterwards. So they're not getting the bulk of the boiling mm -hmm. and, and the heating. Mm -hmm. So let's see, uh, we're going, I need the spoon. Thank mm -hmm. you. So we're just putting in a little bit of coconut oil. Ah. Can you turn this burner on, Ivan? Yes. Nice. And we're going to saute like the eggplant. We don't want this to be mush. No. <laughs> no, eggplant is not good mush. No. So we just mm -hmm. saute this for a few minutes. You know, when eggplant is cooked, it just turns a little bit mm -hmm. of color. And then once it does, then we're going to add our chopped green bell peppers. So you like to cook with coconut oil. Is that, your, yes. is that your cooking oil of preference? Or is that just dealing with Indian food? Or what do you all usually use? Um, I think a lot of Indian food does use coconut, coconat oil. oil. Yeah. That's probably their staple over there yeah. as far as oils, but yeah. you certainly could use olive oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. we try to oil. try our best to avoid canola oil. Yes. We prefer to use mm -hmm. coconut or olive oil. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we see that these are getting cooked here. Yep, they're just starting to go. I can see that. Yep. And so on top of this, we are going to add. Yep, we can see they're changing a little bit on the bottom. We're going to add our green bell pepper and just saute for two to three minutes more. Get these flavors cooked in together. Nice. Mm, yummy. Now, when you do your cooking school demonstrations, do you yes. demonstrate uh, Indian food or what type of we food? We have not yet. It's interesting. In New York City, we have had a lot of interest in raw food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And okay. so although we started demonstrating cooked food, mm -hmm. we always would demonstrate at least one raw uh -huh. recipe because yeah. we want to encourage people to eat more raw fruits mm -hmm. and vegetables mm -hmm. and replace the meats mm -hmm. with, with natural proteins mm -hmm. from greens and, and Grain. beans and, and yeah. you know, those types mm -hmm. of things um, and salads. And so we had more and more interest in the raw, raw food, food yeah. items. Okay. People were trying to think, how can I add more raw food, less cooking time, and people seem to really like that. So we actually have done more of that. And Indian food is um, lengthy in, in detail, <laughs> in preparation, and in cooking. And so we have not yet done these. Okay. But I'm okay. sure that they would be a hit if we did. I would think so. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> No, that's great, absolutely. So when you do your cooking demonstration, somehow you put out a survey or somehow you figure out what the demographic wants or, yes. or how do you do that when you ask them what they're looking for? Mm -hmm. So every attendee, every cooking uh, class attendee, they get to fill out a survey sheet. Mm -hmm. We ask them uh, what are the interests. They like uh, us to provide stress management classes or raw food classes or vegan food classes. And even we have uh, an option for them to check out for Bible studies as well. Oh, amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Combining so the health yes. with the gospel. Yes. Yes. I would say the majority are interested in raw food cooking versus vegan cooking. We have both yes. of those options on there, and that's kind of how we gauge. But in every class, we're interacting with the audience. We're talking to them, and, you know, we always take a, an interest poll. You know, how many of you will go home and make this? <laughs> and we've seen the interest more towards the raw foods, wow. believe it or not. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. So this is ready, and so at this point, we are going to... Uh, the one in the back. Wrong the one. other one, other okay. one. Okay, we're going to turn this off and just set it aside. And okay. we're mainly, mainly going to deal with what's in here. Okay. And so in here, we're going to open this up. And it's been cooking for a while. And we're going to use uh, a potato masher. Mm -hmm. And by now, the potatoes are softer. Mm -hmm. And so we just want to mash. Okay. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Now at home you'd probably let it cook a little longer than we just did. Yes. yes. Maybe yes. 10 yes. minutes, 15, mm -hmm. something like that. I typically cook it until the pressure cooker starts to steam or whistle. Okay. Yep. yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. And so but you we're just advancing it because of television. Right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you would mash all of that together. Okay. And now on top of that, um, we are going to add some of our other ingredients. Okay. We're going to add our eggplant and pepper. Oh, nice which we've just cooked and it's ready. 
Yeah. Smells delicious. <laughs> you get it okay there? Yes. This is a good full pot. This makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This can be eaten for days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Depending how many are in the family. It doesn't last that long. It doesn't right? last that, that long with uh, ID Cell Kitchen. <laughs> Maximum two days is over. <laughs> and so we're going to let this continue to cook here, and we're actually going to roast some of the other seeds mm -hmm. okay. in the pan while this continues to cook. cook. Yeah. Okay. See, there that are many versions. Uh, when you make sambar, there are many versions to make sambar. You can make it different ways. Uh, this is, uh, although it may look a little time consuming, we believe it's, it's worth it because everything we add is very healthy. Every spice which is added is, is really healthy. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. and so now we are actually going to saute and, and just heat up some of the seeds. Nice. And the mustard seeds, these are They're the, the pop. ones that Those are going to pop. pop. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I knew something about popping. But so we're putting good. in mustard seeds mm -hmm. and we're putting in cumin seeds. Nice. Both will pop the mustard seeds a little bit more. Okay. There you go. And then to this, we're also going to add red chilies. Now these we've broken up, so this isn't the whole red chili. Not the big ones chili. like we had for the sandbar. The big box. ones we broke up into about six or eight pieces each, because okay. that would be pretty hot if you got one yes. of those Can in you your imagine mouth, right? Big... <laughs> <laughs> no. And so we break that up a little bit, and then we're also adding our curry leaves. Nice. Love this. This oh, is the yeah. best part. I me. like curry leaves. <laughs> <laughs> and so Great let's see, flavor. we need to turn this flame on. This one? Should be the one in the back. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yes. Okay, so we're going to mix all of this together and let this saute. Nice. Get all those seeds yeah. in there. And you always leave the curry leaves whole like that. You never yes. cut them. Yes, never... I always oh. leave them whole. Okay. Yes, yep. Mm -hmm. And so while that heats up, we will hear the mustard seeds start to pop and the curry <laughs> leaves, you can yes. hear them getting crisp. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're going to um, let that sit for Wait just for a that. moment. Mm -hmm. And oh, the nice. other things that we have here are cilantro mm -hmm. and we have uh, the hing, the mm -hmm. asafoetida, and we also have, this is fenugreek seeds powder. So, so you want the seeds and the powder, or this is actually this is actually powdered fenugreek seeds. So fenugreek seeds powder. So um, it's just ground up okay. fenugreek seeds. It was the mustard seed we put in here. Yes, yes. Okay. correct. I was confused. Correct. Okay. Now so we're these, not using, okay. right, and these will go into our pot. So while we're waiting for this a little bit, we're going to take these off. Mm -hmm. This off because we want to get the cilantro in there, and that's a flavor that we oh, want to yeah. get mixed in. Yeah, it's starting to get warmer now. I can yes. see it's starting to stay Yes, yes, and so we can pour that in. Exactly, and then we're just going to mix this up because we want to stir up all that stuff on the bottom and get this nice. all mixed in, get the cilantro in there so that flavor can start mixing in. And then this would boil for probably another five minutes. The bulk okay. of the boiling happens in the beginning. Okay in the pressure cooker and then we just let this boil for another five minutes and by that time these will be ready and they'll go right in. Mm -hmm. Still got that on. Somehow this keeps turning off. I don't know what's going on with it. Oh, okay. That explains why they're not popping. I thought they ought to be popping. Yeah, they that. usually pop pretty quick. <laughs> they should be popping. What's going yes, on? Yes, they usually so why pop pretty quick. So we wait for that to pop? Tell me about the idli. You can make idli or these little guys here? <clears throat> yes, you can make idli. Idli is made from rice flour and lentil, lentil. flour. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yes. So sambar is like pretty much like one of the sides which we can use for idli. Mm -hmm. And uh, idli is very uh, good for babies as well because it's easy to digest. Okay. So if, if somebody is sick, they can have idli, it's easy to digest. And when people have diabetes or high, I mean blood pressure, whatever it is, mm -hmm. it's a very, uh, how do we say this? Doctors, they just say, go have idli. You can eat idli. <laughs> okay, <laughs> have like idli. If have idli. Sick, the doctor says, it's go steam. home and have some toast and ginger ale, right, uh -huh. they go home and have idli. Idli. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. Yeah. Okay, now this is doing better. Yes, absolutely. Okay, yeah. Exactly. And before they start popping out at us, which they are, we're going <laughs> to... They don't need much. Just a little bit. Yes, just a little bit. We just want to get them heated up. We want the curry leaves to get a little bit crisp, uh -huh. and then it's ready to go into our mixture. And we would add it to the mixture, and you cook it another five, ten minutes, and yes, then when and it then comes out, 
it it's like ready it's to serve. Here. We got one done over yes. here. Yes. <laughs> so nice. Please. It looks wonderful. So we just pour this right in. And just a few more minutes to let all these flavors soak so in good. together. Yeah. yeah. And as I mentioned, you know, you could eat this right away, but it's very spicy. If you let it sit for a couple of hours, the flavors blend in together and the, the you know, the tomatoes and the right. potatoes, those bland types of vegetables. That would kind uh, of calm really it down. tone it down. Yes, uh -huh. Yeah, and the lentils, the tordal that we I put in the bottom. your spoon there? I'm gonna try some. Absolutely. Make sure we don't have any red chilies on it. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm. Oh, that's very good. A little nice. bit of a kick, right? Oh yeah, it has a kick, definitely has a kick. <laughs> but it's good, I like that. Good flavor. I yes. like the curry, I love the different seasonings. Mm -hmm. You know what you put in for the Indians, very good. Yeah, <laughs> yummy. So it's delicious. This has become a staple. We have yeah. to have nice. this like once a week. <laughs> That's wonderful. Let's it's go to delicious. our next recipe here for the creamy cashew sauce with broccoli and brown rice. Do you want to read that? Yes, for the creamy cashew sauce with broccoli and brown rice, we need to have one tablespoon of coconut oil, one tablespoon cumin seeds, five small onions chopped, eight garlic cloves chopped, two cups of water, uh, separate cups, and uh, one and a half cups of uh, raw cashews separated, one tablespoon of chicken style seasoning, one tablespoon sambar powder, one, oh, I'm sorry, four tablespoon nutritional yeast flakes, one teaspoon salt, two cups vegetable broth, one bag of veggie meat pieces, or you can also use one box of tofu cubed. Five cups of brown rice has to be cooked, and one head of broccoli steamed. So this cashew with broccoli and rice is uh, actually a special creation you came up with, right? Yes, one day I was in the kitchen, I was experimenting with cumin seeds, which I typically put into everything because I love them, and I thought, what shall I put in? And I looked in my fridge and I had all these things and I created this recipe. Wow, that's a gift. You know, that, yeah. that really God. is a gift. It really comes from God. I couldn't walk into the, into the kitchen and just say, I have cumin seeds and I'm gonna come up with this. So that's a gift, praise the Lord. Okay, right. praise God. So to get started, Ivan, you can turn this burner on. We're just gonna put in a little bit of coconut oil and we're going to saute some cumin seeds. Mm -hmm. And to this, we are going to add some chopped garlic. Yes. So this is going to smell mm -hmm. very garlicky. Uh, garlicky. <laughs> as well as the onion. We're putting onion I love in here garlic. as well. Mm -hmm. Fresh garlic has such a good taste. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. It's so good for you, too. OK, so we'll put these aside. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to let this cook together a little bit. Get the heat going. So you kind of did them in little sliced wedges or something size. Yes, yes, so just sliced. So you're to chop it real small or Yeah, it doesn't have to be, because you know the onion melts down a little bit and, and um, works out very, very well. Okay, so we would typically saute this for about three minutes. Mm -hmm. And then to this, we're going to add a little bit of water, just really to cover. Okay. It, it would probably measure out to be about a cup of water. Okay. Okay, there you go, that's good. And then to that, we're going to go ahead and add cashews. Nice. Mm -hmm. Love cashews. It's very <laughs> Asian to have cashews in your stir fry dish. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Also Indian as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so now we're adding that sambar powder that we made earlier. Okay. So you put it in a lot of I your do. Indian dishes. I do. Yeah, yeah. I really like the taste of it, the blend of the spices. Does it keep in the in the cupboard a long time? Absolutely. Okay. At least six months. Okay. Probably so you longer. Can just make up what we did and then just yep. use it in all your different Absolutely. dishes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Then we're putting uh, chicken style seasoning. Yeah. Nutritional yeast flakes. Yes. That'll give it that cheesy mm -hmm. feel. And salt. And you all like pink Himalayan salt. Yes, or gray Celtic salt. Okay. I prefer the pink. Mm -hmm. Like pink. <laughs> Did you tell? What was our first clue? <laughs> <laughs> so we just need to stir this in a little bit more. Get that um, mm -hmm. nutritional yeast stirred in with the sambar powder. We need all these flavors to come together a little bit. And then to this, we're going to be adding a veggie meat. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. uh, now you can use cubed tofu. Nice. It works very, very well. The cubed tofu um, kind of has that, you know, egg consistency, mm -hmm. consistency a little bit more. But we're going to put in this cubed veggie meat. Okay. Is there a certain veggie meat you like to use? For this one, I use a brand called Corn. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a it's a fairly it healthy. It works well and absorbs. Yeah, and it works the well. It does. It really does. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. And so we're going to let this uh, sit for a little while, get these flavors blended in, and we're going to get ready to make our sauce, which we're going to use the Vitamix nice. for. Okay. And the sauce uses um, vegetable broth. Okay. More now, cashews. Now, what do you do for your vegetable broth? Would you go out and buy vegetable broth from the store, or would you? You sure could. Use sometimes it for your vegetables that you cook, or what do you do? You could do either of those. Also, sometimes in a health food store, they'll have cubed veggie broth yes. that you soak in water and and add. So any one of those options is great. That sure saves time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna put in our veggie broth. We're also going to put in uh, a half a cup of the cashews. The cashews were separated because we want to make this a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. And now <clears throat> we are going to add, yeah, I uh, thanks. we're going to add some of our mixture here because we want that onion and garlic flavor. Yes, in your sauce. Yes, mm -hmm. in our mm -hmm. sauce. Now normally you'd let this cook for how long before you would? Um, a few minutes. It's okay. really, it's really probably fine. Um, the the veggie meat, we just want to let it absorb the flavor a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we are going to oh, okay. take quite a bit of this. This this is actually a good replacement for people who are into meat and cheese. Yes. You know. Yes, absolutely. It's a very good replacement. Mm -hmm. so. Because you say, well, I'm used to eating it with meat, so yeah. I don't know what to. I don't know what to do. I don't know what Correct. to substitute. Correct. Correct. I'm definitely not going to just eat leafy greens. You right. Know? So right, I want right. something hearty. Right. So this would be a good substitute. Yes. Yeah. And tofu is also like uh, a good replacement for egg mm -hmm. uh, in this dish. Oh, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. So we just need a little bit of, um, you know, the cashews in there. Make sure you grab some onions and some garlic. That's what's really gonna. Give this sauce the flavor and make it creamy. Can you just mm -hmm. stir that a little bit more, Ivan? And so we're going to blend this. Okay. And it doesn't take much. We just want to get the cashews ground up, really. Mm -hmm. And so, we typically serve this dish over brown rice. Okay. Sounds fabulous. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. and so we've got our brown rice, and then on top of that, we would layer, you can turn the heat off, Ivan. Sure. So okay. then we would layer basically this. On top of your rice. On top of mm -hmm. our rice. Mm -hmm. Nice, yummy. Yes. Mm. And then on top of that, we would put some already steamed broccoli. Okay. Not too cooked. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we would pour our Your sauce. Set. Now, does the sauce set up? Does it thicken? It if, does. If you, if you let it sit, or? it does. Okay. It definitely does. Okay. Oh, man, that looks good. Yes. And then we have one that's f finished that actually is over the rice. You can actually see it's over the rice there. Yes, nice. absolutely. Ooh. I yeah. love so that. it's a great dish to bring to your next family gathering or a church potluck or <laughs> and it's a layered dish. Yes. Because yes. you have you have the rice first and then you have the the ca uh, the cashew Sauce. and the onion and the, the and the veggie and meat. Yes. Yep. And then you would put the broccoli, steamed broccoli on top, and then you get the sauce on top. Yes, so that way we're getting fiber, we're getting protein, we're getting basically everything we need in one meal. Yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> I'm going to take one piece out of here. Sure. Try that. Mmm. Oh, this is good. Do you taste the cumin? Mmm. 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 That's very good. She wants to make sure you taste the cumin out of all of this. Mmm. It's perfect. It's not too spicy. It's perfect. Right. Mm. Yeah. Great flavor. I love that. I, I gotta make, eat some more of that. Let's <laughs> go for our next recipe here. You want to read that, Heidi? Sure, so the next recipe is rassam, and to make a rassam, you'll need seven ounces of tamarind paste, three large tomatoes, 
one bunch of cilantro, three tablespoons of cumin seeds, one handful curry leaves, half a cup of garlic minced, three tablespoons of hing, cayenne and salt to taste, four cups of water, and a tablespoon of olive oil. You told us, Ivan, at the beginning, when we talked about the rasam and yes. saw the picture of it, mm -hmm. that you would use this, you eat it after, right? Yeah, we can after. actually, we typically, in, especially in South India, um, people have rasam after they have rice. Okay. After they have the main okay. course, is at the end of their... But before dinner. dessert, or...? Before dessert, yes, absolutely before dessert. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's very good for digestion. Rasam is very good for digestion. That's good. Yeah. You know, we yeah. would think of having a little soup at the beginning, and then mm -hmm. you go transition mm. into your entree. Yeah. But you're saying you, you have this after. Yes, it's good for also cold, cough as well. It actually relieves, because uh, tamarind has that uh, properties in it, mm -hmm. w uh, which helps uh, relieve uh, tamarind and cayenne pepper as well. That's good. Just congestion all this. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you, we already got some stuff going here. Yes. Yeah. So, so what we on? did was we took our tamarind paste mm -hmm. and we put it in a pot with our three tomatoes. We covered it with water and we boiled this mm -hmm. because we need to remove the skins mm -hmm. from the tomatoes, mm -hmm. uh, which Ivan will do now. And they need to boil for them to loosen up enough for they us to do. get the skins off. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he'll work on that right now. Uh, tamarind is the base of this soup. Ah, and it's got a very unique okay. flavor. It blends, it goes very, very well with the tomato and the mm -hmm. cilantro. Mm -hmm. Nice, okay. Yes, it's So delicious. you just have three big tomatoes that we boiled so that the skins yes. will slip off easily. Correct, okay. correct. And while he's peeling off those skins, uh, we're gonna go ahead and saute some of the other items. So we've just got a little bit of olive oil here. You can use olive or coconut oil. You want to put the fire on there, Ivan? We sure do. Yeah. Yes, I know that. <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and saute curry leaves, cumin seeds, and minced garlic. <clears throat> and so again, we want these curry leaves to get crisp. Smells good. Okay. So we're just gonna saute this together. And Ivan, you can go ahead and peel those skins off. Once we have the skins off, we're gonna, in a separate pot, put in the tamarind and the water and the tomatoes mm -hmm. and what we're sauteing here. We're gonna mix it together. Then we're gonna add our cilantro, hing, and cayenne. Okay. And Very nice. It's a delicious soup. Oh, yeah, it <laughs> looks great. I've never had anything like this, so this is amazing. Yeah. Now, how's the tomato peeling going over there? Hot? Um, <laughs> manageable. <laughs> it's kind of hot, you know, you're trying to. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. We typically want to let that cool enough that we can get our yes. hands in there, because not yes. only do we need to peel the skins mm -hmm. off, but then we need to mash the tomatoes so that they're. Not a chunk of stewed tomato, but pieces of okay. stewed tomato. Okay, oh, yeah, so I can our hear cumin them. seeds are popping. They're starting to pop. Our curry leaves are getting crispy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we got some good stuff going on here. Yes. <laughs> good. And I like to stir you this because the cumin seeds will burn if the heat is on too high mm -hmm. or if they're in the pan right. for too long. Right. We don't want to burn them. We just want to lightly roast them. Good. So this heat, I'm actually going to turn off. Okay. And just let those sit there. And okay, the skins are peeled. Yes, and if it's not too hot, do you think you could mash those up a little oh, bit? Or I are they too hot? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Ivan. <laughs> Poor Ivan. <laughs> Um, you want a spoon? Yeah. Maybe that'll yes. help. You can break yes. it up. That'll be good. And so this mixture, we're just going to put in a bigger pot because we need to add all of this together. Okay. So this is our tamarind and the water. Yes. This is the base of the soup. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can put this aside. Yep. That's hot. Okay. And we're going to put this in because this is ready. Okay. And then the tomatoes will be added in with the cilantro. Nice. And then we got some more water? Yes, now you can make this into a 
larger soup. If you wanted to cook it in a large stock pot, you can add as much water as you'd like because the tamarind has a pretty distinct taste and it won't lose it. Okay. So if you want to make a larger quantity, you could then freeze some if oh, you wanted to. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And is it the tamarind that aids in digestion? Because you were yes. saying yes. For, okay, it's the tamarind. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we've got okay. that in there. We're also going to add our cilantro leaves because we want those to to have a chance to wilt and and also uh, blend in with the flavor. Nice. So we're adding all of this in and. Once we have all of this in with the tomatoes. And the tomatoes um, look good over there, Ivan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh, they look good. Yeah. We would add our salt. Mm -hmm. Salt to taste. Got Cayenne it. pepper. Okay. Mm we added about a teaspoon. Mm -hmm. We like a lot. You can add <laughs> half a teaspoon or a quarter <laughs> teaspoon. And our hang. Nice, okay. And so we'll stir this up, and then typically we want to put the cover on. We can see that it's steaming, okay. mm -hmm. right? It's hot, and by putting the cover on, uh, that cilantro will just wilt. Yeah, there we go. It's just a one. Okay. <laughs> yes. Nice. Okay, so the tomato is ready. Tomatoes Great, tomatoes, tomatoes are ready. We can put the tomatoes right in. I can bring this a little closer for you here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you can just pour that right in. And how long you put the lid on, let it will, how long? About 30 minutes. 30 minutes, okay. So rasam is pretty cheap. Or yeah. sometimes you can even get it for free in certain wow. places. Wow. But I noticed that when I came here, rasam was like expensive for Especially me. Especially in New York City. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now we have some that's all done because we want to get to our last recipe. So yes. It's all done. And I can see it change color as yes. it's there and as it, you can see the difference there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. As the cilantro uh, mingles in there, it does change. Mm -hmm. No, that's very nice. And then I have a little bit I pulled out of the pot. I got to try this. <laughs> now, this is my first time with tamarind, so we'll find okay. out. Okay. Oh, great. Mmm. <laughs> very different, right? Mm -hmm. Very tasty. Yes. Oh yeah, this is great. You gotta try this at home. That's very good. So next time you're sick, if you have a whole a cold or a chest congestion or any oh. type of cough. Make some rasam. That's right. <laughs> and then after that we need our lassi. So let's read our yes. last recipe for the vegan mango lassi. And so for vegan mango lassi, we will need one and a half cups of fresh mango or mango pulp or even frozen mango chunks. We'll also need one and a half cups of real almond milk. We need a quarter teaspoon of cardamom powder and two to three flakes of saffron for that extra touch. I've been waiting the whole program for this. <laughs> <laughs> Mango lassi, I'm excited about it. Yes. Yes. So this is a typical um, drink. South Indian drink, especially during summertime. Okay. So we veganized the whole thing. So there's no <laughs> dairy in it. We made it with almond milk, real almond milk, yes. which Heidi will say. Uh, and, you know, yeah, and we made the almond milk on a different program. You yes. can always get the recipe. Just go to our website, look at the recipes, and it's there. But mm -hmm. tell us briefly what, what's in it. Sure, it's milk. really easy. It's one cup of almonds that have been soaked overnight mm -hmm. beforehand mm -hmm. and mixed with three cups of water, blended in the, in the Vitamix mm -hmm. with a few dates, some vanilla, and a little bit of salt. And it was very easy. Mm. Very yeah, easy and, then and you delicious. Just strain out and keep strain the pulp out. for something yes. else and then use and the milk was fabulous. So. Yes. Okay. So that really adds to the taste yes. in this recipe. Yes. And as Ivan said, we, we kind of veganized this. Typically they they use heavy cream and sugar, sugar and, and lots of dairy in, in, in the mango lassi. So okay. um, this will be a delicious vegan version. <laughs> so we're pouring in our real almond milk. Mm -hmm. Our Mango, we're using uh, frozen mango chunks here. Nice. Mm. And depending on how thick or thin you want it, <laughs> you can put in the juice, um, but we like it a little bit thicker. Okay. So I'm just putting in the mango pieces here okay. as much as possible. Nice. And this could be like a regular smoothie, but you said you're putting a few different herbs. Yeah, a couple yes. of spices couple of that are making it different. Correct. Yes. Right. Okay. The saffron and the cardamom makes it Indian. Indian. If you take it okay. off, it's not Indian. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to also blend in the cardamom, but we'll add the saffron at the end. Okay. Into, into our glass. So we're just going to blend this up. It's so easy and quick. There you go. So 
we can see it's changed a light yellow color. Mm -hmm. Just want to get those mangoes all blended in with the almond milk. And that's all there is to that's it. That's really it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so then you would pour this into your favorite pitcher or glass. Mm -hmm. And, and then where does the saffron come in then? So the saffron we actually put into the glass. I see. So I got a glass here. We'll just put in, you really only need like one or two pieces. If you put too much, it'll overpower it. Yes, it's got a pungent smell. Okay. And um, this is also a good spice. It's actually found mostly in southern Europe and northernmost part of India. Huh? It's called, it's an exotic spice actually. Yeah. A little pricey, but Absolutely. worth it. So we'll, we'll pour some. Mmm, mmm, mmm. It's good, right? Oh, Not too fabulous. sweet. Mmm. Not sweet. It is perfect. This is very good. I love it. And the saffron makes a big difference. Yes. Yes, absolutely. it does. Doesn't it's it? not too strong, but you can taste just a little bit of it, and mm -hmm. it's fabulous. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so just a couple of little pieces. Saffron is also good for skin and hair as well. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's very okay. good. It's very uh -huh. good. Does it make your hair grow? Doesn't I'm not sure if there's the other one we talked about. Remember, the, and, and that was tamarind and okay. curry leaves also. Okay. Yes, curry leaves are also and very good for the hair. Gray. Yeah. Yes, uh -huh. yes, yes. On our Facebook page, we have recipes, natural remedies based on uh, Indian cooking as well, like Indian uh, dishes, mm -hmm. um, so that something people can make use of. Oh, that's great! Absolutely, and it's just Heidi's Health Kitchen. Yes, Facebook.com/slash Heidi's Health Kitchen. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So, what other stuff would would we find? I know you have different products, and we're going to give you address mm -hmm. in just a moment. Yes, but yes. what are the products and the different things that you all have available? Sure. So we we have our karubis. They're uh, uh, like a carob treat. They're I've absolutely delicious. <laughs> they come in nine flavors. You have to try them all. <laughs> we got a little box here, but yes. they come in this little box here with your little your brown and pink. But Heidi's yes. Health Kitchen karubis. They're they're really good. Yes. I've had them. They're fabulous. Mm -hmm. So those are available on our website. Okay. People can call us or email us to order. We also have um, some other desserts, a wide range of desserts, including our newest product, which is our raw vegan ice cream. Four layered raw vegan nice. ice cream. <laughs> Tell me real quick, what are the four layers? Carob, mm -hmm. pistachio, mm -hmm. almond, and black forest, which is Ooh. cherry. Mm. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> There's also <laughs> some raw delicious. tarts. There's raw some tarts. lasagna. There's mm -hmm. some all different stuff. Yes, raw we make organic butter. kale chips, raw Ooh. peanut butter cookies. That's <laughs> exciting. That's wonderful. <laughs> well, what we want to do right now is to put up Heidi and Ivan's contact information. If you would like them to come to your church, your mm -hmm. community center, put mm -hmm. on a cooking school if you're interested in any one of these yummy products we've been talking about, <laughs> um, or you're interested in supporting the new restaurant, the venture mm -hmm. that God has mm -hmm. put on their heart. Here is how you can do just that. Heidi's Health Kitchen is committed to offering delicious, healthy, vegan foods that are appealing to the senses. If you would like to know more, you can write to Heidi's Health Kitchen, Post Office Box 232, Babylon, New York, 11702. That's Heidi's Health Kitchen, Post Office Box 232, Babylon, New York, 11702. You can call 631-663-3128. That's 631-663-3128 or visit them online for events, food, and more at Heidi'sHealthKitchen.com. That's Heidi'sHealthKitchen.com. Hello, I'm Jason Bradley, and we love to hear from those of you who take time to write and call us. A viewer in Brooklyn, New York wrote us to say, I've been watching 3ABN for several years now and want to congratulate your entire team as you celebrate your 30th anniversary. I love you all and may God bless each and every one of you real good as you continue work for Him. May this gospel reach the ends of the earth so Christ can come and take His faithful children home. I hope to be one of them. Here's a letter from a viewer who enjoyed our music special, Hallelujah, We're Home at Last. They wrote, as I listened to the choir and Mr. Larry Goss, I just kept wondering where would we be today if there were no 3ABN? Where would we be if there hadn't been a group of believers to proclaim this message to a lost and dying world? Where would we be if Jesus hadn't touched so many people to provide the funds to keep 3ABN going and on the air all these years? We simply must do all we can through the blessings the Lord has bestowed on each of us. 
So many of you tell us that 3ABN has brought you back to the Lord like this viewer who writes from North Brunswick, New Jersey. I want to thank you for teaching me present truth, she says. I have been a Christian since I was 17 and I'm 74 now, but I was rebaptized last August and joined the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I've been watching 3ABN since we got cable in 2008, and I thank John Stanton and John Lomakang on house calls for answering my questions using the Bible. I also want to thank Doug Batchelor for explaining to me what happens when we die, just as I was asking that question while going through a bout of breast cancer. Thank you for being there for me. And finally, this letter that says, I left the church at an early age, but was rebaptized from watching 3ABN. We pray for you each morning and evening because you are truly like family to us. We can't always get to church, but thank God we have 3ABN. This is truly God's station. I want to thank all of you who pray for this ministry and support financially each month. And if the Holy Spirit impresses, please send your tax-deductible gifts to 3ABN, Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896. Thank you for your love and support, and may God bless you all during this new year. Welcome back, friends. We're here with our delicious spread of Indian food. And I tell you, I have learned a lot, and I've had such a good time with you both. We've had fun, too. Yes, we enjoyed it. Thank you for having us here. Thank you for coming and sharing with our friends at home the gifts that God has given to yes, you. Yes, absolutely. Amen. Let's look at what we made today. Sure. So the first thing that we made was our sambar powder, mm -hmm. which is a seasoning that you can add to many, many of your different dishes. We added it to the sambar right there. The, yes, we the did. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we made the soup, and then we serve it with the idli. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we made our brown rice with cashew, veggie mm -hmm. meat, and the sauce, and the broccoli. And broccoli. And the sauce. That was fabulous. That was very good. <laughs> and this is the rasam. Yes. It's yeah. also called as pepper water in India. Pepper water. That's okay. English. <laughs> I like that. And then we ended with our mango lassi. <laughs> that was wonderful. And I have my own little glass. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And here, they just gave me this. This is, uh, it's called cool. Cool free. This is the ice cream you all were talking yes. about. Yes. This is a raw ice cream. It's nice. Raw vegan ice cream. And it's actually a, a, a pop. It's a push pop. Slowly. Yes, Slowly. it's frozen right now, but just give it a couple minutes and, and then it'll pop out. Thaw and you'll be able to put it up and eat it. <laughs> That's great. Right. Well, I so appreciate you all in your ministry and what God has Thank called you. you to do. Do you have any closing thoughts you want to share with them? Sure, absolutely. So our, our objective is, of course, to make sure that people get uh, uh, healthy food, but at the same time, it has to be delicious as well, because usually vegan is not a, um, delicious according to the people but we want to make sure it is delicious as well. So. Amen, amen, <laughs> absolutely. Well, we had such a good time in the kitchen preparing this food and sharing it with you at home. I want to encourage you to take a step toward healthier eating, toward yes. more plant-based. Yes. Enjoy these uh, Indian recipes. Take them to your home and to your heart. Share them with your friends, mm -hmm. and we will see you next time. God bless you and keep you.